Hey, welcome back. Another day, another vlog. Back at work, on site, in the Pilbara. That's all I can say. I've got to keep that quiet. Keep on the low down. Hope you all had a good Wednesday. Hump day done and dusted for another week. Getting closer to Christmas and that chaos that ensures every year for us adults. Kids love it. Jack's having a ball. Uh, you, yeah, you can't, you can't beat watching a kid smile with Christmas coming. Um, and that's one of the thrills of a parent is to, to see him get so excited and fun. So that's cool. Uh, for us parents and suckers at work, uh, yeah, it's just a nightmare. <laughs> uh, there's so much to do, trying to catch up with people, do all the stuff. We're back at work. Uh, we got, it's, yeah, we got bosses around. It's, yeah, it's not much fun. But it's all good. We, uh, that's why you're here, to come and switch off from work. So we're not going to talk about anything depressing tonight. We're going to talk about something fun and exciting. Apple headphones. And they're so cheap. <laughs> Big news on that. Uh, other than that, um, we've got headphones from Apple. We've got some stuff coming, some info on some Sigma stuff. And some Oppo patents. Now, today I was training someone to fill in for me so I could go do training for droning. For my training. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Doesn't to me either. But anyway, I'm doing it uh, yet again. This is the second person in the last swing I've had to train. And I've got to train another one apparently next swing as well. So it's lots of training practice for me. I must be becoming a trainer. I think that's my next job. Um, but other than that, uh, so it wasn't a, I didn't get a chance to have a real good, just quickly over lunch, had a quick gander and sussed out what's going on. Last night, obviously, the big news, we'll just get straight into that. We're going to talk about these a fair bit. Uh, Apple's new, uh, what are they called? AirPods Max. Straight away, the name is, let me just boop, focus. The name is a bit weird. A, they're not AirPods, AirPods, because they, they don't fit in your ears, um, which I think is weird. They're Max. Is that because they're Max? Because they're not AirPods? They're, I think the name is terrible. Uh, so I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm, not, I'm a shit, shit horrible liar. So um, yeah, I think the name's crap. It's like it just makes a well, they, like they bought. They paid three billion dollars for a company to just to get their technology, and you throw away Beats. Um, what was wrong with Beats? If you're going to do overhead earphones. Beats was it. You could have done all the in-ear headphones as as pods, uh, which suits them, and that works well. But to call these AirPods Max is just retarded. I'm sorry. I don't really like using that name, but it's just the stupidest name ever. Uh, I can't believe they wasted it. Now, let's get on to the other stupid thing. They're friggin' $900, man. $900, $900 bucks Australian, $550 US. Uh, that's insanity. I don't know what planet people live on where they've got to spend 900 bucks to waste on headphones. I've got my monster ones here, which are wireless, Bluetooth 5.0 and everything. 50 bucks Australian delivered off eBay, brand new, all the way from England for 50 bucks. You've got to be smoking crack to be blowing money on headphones. They would want to massage your neck, uh, tell you the lotto numbers, and a lot of other crap for $900. You could buy so many good things for $900. Uh, nowadays, it's, I think Apple's just gone crazy. You know, the fun and the worst thing is people are going to go and blow $900 a grand on a set of headphones. Um, like three, four hundred, five hundred. Look, five hundred is a premium set of headphones. For 278 US bucks, which is about 500, and you can get them on uh, seconds on Sony on eBay. The WX4s, exactly the same noise cancelling, transparency mode, all the other fun stuff that you want. Uh, comfortable, have uh, got a solid re uh, reputation that work, and they work really, really well with all formats. Uh, 278, so nearly half price, just under half price. Uh, why do they think they can do it? Is this like the Mac Pro where it's just a, I guess it's, it's Apple has turned into a luxury brand. It's not about technology anymore. You're paying for the brand. You're paying for the Ferrari. You're paying for the Louis Vuitton stamp on the luggage. 
that's all you're paying for now. Well, it's Apple, I'll pay 900 bucks. It's just crazy. Even the phones, how many phones have I run through years, guys, this year that are Android phones, which are just insane specs. Just as good as what Apple has released. Yeah, Apple might be a little bit better, but is it double the price better? And that's the thing, is, is it double the value? We've got a company worth $1 trillion. At one stage, there was $2 trillion. Uh, and they just seem to be just diving straight in everyone's pockets and just stealing the money off them. It's just terrible. Um, look, mate, I love Apple. I love their products. It works seamlessly. They're great. They're, I have to work. I use a poxy Windows computer every day at work, and I hate it. I love coming home to the Apple, which just is so much better experience to use as a computer. Uh, I ain't no hacker, um, so I don't need hacking stuff. I ain't, I'm not a game. I don't need all that stuff. I play PlayStation if I'm going to game. That's the only one I'll play on. So that's what I played my whole life. So that's all I need. Um, pre Commodore 60, uh, post Commodore 64 days. But it's just, it's just is the prices are just getting out of control. It's like cars. Cars are going out of control. An average car now costs eighty thousand dollars. That's more than an annual per annual wage. It's yeah. It's it's. I don't know. Anyway, that's my little wow about that. The cost and that. That's the bad stuff. Now, good stuff. Look, they look fantastic. Uh, Apple always gets its uh, the image right and the and the looks and the great. They're anodized cups, aluminium cups. They've got the mesh top, the little soft mesh coming through there. What happens when that tears? Is then you're gonna have little steel bars sitting in your head? It's a little bit. Look, it looks fancy. It looks great. Now you don't have touch control on it like you do on say the Sony at half price um, you've got the Apple Watch dial so you've got to find the dial swivel that get used to that touch it play with it it's all about the Apple jog wheel dial that they use on the watches so if you're used to Apple with the watch and you use that which I never use it ever uh, you just touch and tap in the stuff I don't really the only time I think I ever go near the wheel is when I need to get the water out of it. That's the only time I use a wheel on a watch. So I don't know why they chucking it into their headphones. Now, they look great. Now, sound wise, some spec wise and stuff like that. Look, it sounds amazing. It's stainless steel frame, so it's gonna last. That, that's good. Hopefully they're as comfortable as what they said because I remember I got the Beats Pro ones. Uh, they were the solid sort of aluminium ones and they were ridiculously hard on my head. I got a buff head. I can't do nothing about that. Uh, and I had to get rid of them. I, got, I think I gave them to me little niece, Georgia, because they just wouldn't fit on my head and they were terrible. So I, I just didn't use them for that fact. And they were really, really good headphones. Um, got the mesh head band. It's teles telescopic. And it'll, apparently it'll stop wherever you want on that shaft. Uh, you can pull up and down on that shaft. There's your funny joke for the show. Um, how long that's going to last... They've got to, hopefully they've got this quality right on it. It's pretty wild. Um, the Alloy Cups, it's using a digital crown. We talked about that. There's five colors. The colors look fantastic. That's great. You don't need a cover for headphones. So colors actually are useful on a headphone. I think that's good. The I think they call it a pink. I don't know why they don't have a red. Are they going to then bring out a product red? Are they going to bring out a plastic version, which is maybe half the price? That would be nice with the same tech. Um, Definitely would be nice to have some Apple headphones. I know I actually was waiting for these, but at that price, there's not a chance on this earth I'll be paying for it. I think that's just insane. Now, it does have the H1 chip, which is from the little AirPods Pro. So that wise, sound wise, is going to be fantastic. It's got that transparency mode, adaptive equalizers. It's got that spatial audio, which is in your pros, which are, I think about 300 bucks. Uh, so they're a lot cheaper. So you can get that same, all the same sort of tech in the in the earpods and pay probably half the money just to be aware of that. So very expensive. Now the only other gripe I do have with it, um, before I give you my overall opinion, is it's a USB-C to Lightning. Now I'm pretty sure next year is the first year that Europe, that's that I think it's Europe or, or the year after, it might be 2022 when Europe goes to Full USB-C, you're not allowed to make any Lightning products anymore. Uh, that's it, it's all over for Lightning products. 
So you're gonna get a year out of these headphones and then you're not gonna be able to buy spare cables for them if you live in Europe. So just be aware of that. I don't know what the hell they were thinking putting friggin' lightning into it. Uh, is it the fact that they've had these ready to go for a while and just been on the back burner for some other technology and just it was too hard to change it to USB-C or they're just that stubborn that they refuse to go to USB-C on both ends. I really don't understand that that formula that Apple's using for that. So it's very weird to me. And that's about it. Um, look, they're a fan, they look they look great. I'm sure they're going to sound great. Uh, I know Lou later, who did a bit of an unboxing or chat about them, he talked about that spatial audio when he tried it on the Pods Pro. And the iPod Pro were really, really good. He said it was actually quite discerning walking around and the music's going behind you because it basically, it'll it'll space the music where you go. Now having said that, that only works with uh, tracks that have been optimized for that on the Apple system, correct? So not it's not gonna work for say, your old um, Beatles greatest hits album that you've got on vinyl that you've got uh, recorded onto uh, MP4. It ain't gonna work for that. It's not going to work from Tool or Megadeth or anything that's going to really use that and give you that full atmosphere. Um, it has to be optimized. Now, these are things I guess those uh, musicians that work on Apple Music, once this becomes mainstream, they'll start making that happen. But it's, it's going to be limited for the start. It's like all new technology. It takes a while to get out. So... Just be aware uh, that spatial audio sounds fantastic, but you, it's highly possible the music that you listen to ain't gonna have it. Yes, so just watch out for that. Now, uh, from the headphones, let's get out of the headphones. Uh, very weird, very, look, they look cool, very weird, but very, very, way over expensive. Um, Sigma, good news from Sigma. The RF mount, well, we've got the RF mount, we've got the RP now, which is fantastic. Uh, great to see lenses are tricky. I said to you, I think I said to you last week or this week, might have been, that finding a wide angle lens for this is insanely expensive. I have to, I've got no choice to, to either go fixed focal length, like a, I'm looking at a 15, a 15 mil or a, or a 14 mil from Sanyang or a, 15 mil from Lawa. Lawa I'd really like to get, but they're still not cheap. They're seven, 800 bucks for, and that's just for a fixed manual lens. To go autofocus and get a, a spread, we're looking plus a thousand bucks or minimum secondhand, a thousand dollars for a, say a series one L series 16 to 28 from Canon. So the options there for these RF mount really haven't grown as much. Now we've got a, a fair bit coming from Canon, but an RF 15 to 30, I think it is, is four grand, four grand Australian. That is just crazy. What, that's, the lens would be worth four times what I'd pay for the camera. That makes no sense, no sense. It's entry level. I need entry level lenses, Canon. You've got to give us some entry level wide angles for Christ's sake, give us a chance. Um, I do have the 24 to 105 coming, but uh, look, now Sigma has announced 2021, they're going to be bringing out some R mount lenses and also some Z mount lenses for those Nikon Z mirrorless. So fantastic news for us guys that, uh, well, we haven't won the lottery, so we can't afford the good gear or we're not professionals where we can write it off in tax. Uh, maybe down the road, if we can ever get the Australian government to recognize this channel, I might be able to do that. But yeah, at the moment, We've got to look for an alternative and option, and I'm just looking like a fixed or a second hand. Maybe I'm get an old Series One, 16 to 28 Canon EF. That's sort of my what I'm looking at and searching now and hunting. But uh, Sigma could be our saviour if we get Sigma in there, making some nice uh, RF lenses, even some fixed ones, uh, some primes, maybe a, a 15 mil and a prime with a 1.4 or. 1.8 would be fantastic. That would be pretty cool. I could definitely chuck that on there. Um, and then get them under that sub $1,000 mark as well would be super. And then some other cheaper zooms as well. Um, 
some some zooms in that contemporary range as well as in your art range that would be fantastic so look good news there for us uh, for r mount and for the z mount from sigma and i'd say you're going to get some more from tamron and Takina this year as, as well they'll be all looking towards jumping into that mirrorless world and providing that customer base is getting bigger and they want to want to they're going to want a piece of that pie, so I wouldn't imagine it being too much longer. Now, last but not least, uh, quick show today. Uh, a little, little bit quick. The Apple one took up a fair bit. Um, but Oppo, we've heard of Oppo phone company. Nothing majorly new on the phone market, but a huge patent dropped out from them or leaked out uh, about a removable, like that, removable uh, camera uh, control unit or camera lens section out of the back of the phone. So you've got your normal phone, take my iPhone, so where the lenses are and this new Oppo, you'll see the patent on the thumbnail. You can basically come through, push a button, pull the whole camera unit out, take it out, replace it. Maybe we're looking at Oppo going down the road of making their own interchangeable lens system for a phone. So we all, we all know like lenses, there's only so much you can do in a finite space, but just say you've got your standard mobile phone lens, much like on the Apple, but you want to put, you're actually going to go do some video stuff and you want to put a decent moment lens on. Cool, you can buy the case, you can do all that, or maybe Oppo's looking down the barrel of, well, hang on, let's work with moment, let's work with one of these uh, mini lens companies, let's develop a, a unit where they can we can pull that out and we can place in a moment lens perfectly suited with a massive one inch sensor, two inch sensor or, or a full frame sensor on the back of that. Pop it in, plug it back into the phone and you've got a fully fledged cinema rig ready to go. How cool would that be? Fully fledged wide angle photography, a telescopic lens, all that fun stuff. I'm sure that's sort of what they're thinking down the barrel of, that would be my guess. Uh, you have a look at the paint and see what I'm saying. It's a little, looks just look like a little rectangle, but you can only imagine that once you pull that out, uh, what you could insert into there to make it useful and versatile towards a film or photography side. So, I think uh, yeah, some some funky stuff happening in the in the phones. They're struggling. The phones you've got iPhone 12, Samsung. They're looking into folding. Folding's okay, but it really hasn't just exploded like I guess they hoped. Um, it's harder and harder for these companies to find, I guess, something exciting for you to want to spend two, two grand on, three grand on. Uh, and I think that's that's going to get trickier and trickier because it, you've now got a hundred phone companies all doing 8K and 120 hertz screens and OLEDs and this and that and 65 lenses and 600 megapixels and all that insanity that generally we don't need. We've got a 12 megapixel iPhone 12 that makes amazing videos and amazing uh, cameras. With a A7S III with a 12 megapixel sensor, that is the best video camera on the market, hybrid. Uh, so megapixels are great for us landscape guys to get our big vistas and stuff, to get all those details. But realistically, those things you don't need and a lot of it's gimmicky to try and get you to sell it. Now here's another option that may give you, those guys a little bit more professional, a bit better of a way to use that sensor or another type of sensor in a different way. Maybe team up with Sony and get a camera proper one inch sensor, the ZV-1, place that in a small unit, with, then you can screw on your moment, instant upgrade. So, wow, cool, very, very cool. And that's about it. Now here I've got set up, we're done and dusted, first show of the swing. Uh, Drone training tomorrow for me, so it'll be interesting. It might be a late one by the time we get back and get some info for you, but I will definitely catch you all tomorrow for Thursday. Wicked. Radio, we'll be coming this way, that way. I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.